I'm here with Rocco Agostini, who battled his way through a devastating addiction to a life he never could have imagined. He is here today to tell his story. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So I want to start with the, with the bad stuff. Tell me what your life looked like with substance abuse. Well, um, it started off, you know, just uh, as a young and kind of getting into the wrong crowd with the wrong people and uh, started off uh, innocently enough with just weed and stuff like that. But then as I got older, it started to progress into uh, deeper and, and darker uh, drugs. That's how it started. And it ended up, uh, you know, in crack houses for three days straight. So wow. it, was a, it wasn't a just all in one. It was a progression of, uh, of things. Absolutely. And what made you finally hit the end rock bottom? <laughs> Uh, well, my, my brother took me to a Teen Challenge outreach, and uh, this was in the thick of my addiction, probably the deepest part of it. Um, and he tried to get me there on the guise of getting a job. Um, I've been in the culinary industry for most of my life, which kind of put me in the situation I was in in the first place, because, uh, you know, uh, kitchen folk is a crazy breed of people that work in kitchens. They're, it's a lot of work, a lot of pressure. So he took me to the outreach, and... Uh, Lo and behold, I went re reluctantly, but there was a friend of mine that I used to do drugs with that was in the program. I hadn't seen him for six months. And uh, lo and behold, there he was with his hands up in the air, praising the Lord. And, uh, it, it knocked me out of my seat. I couldn't, I was just amazed. And I knew at that point that there was, there was a reason I was there. Definitely. Wow. And yeah. were you just, were you like hating your life with addiction, but couldn't get out? Yeah, or? it was just, it was at the point where I, I was burning every bridge that I could that I came across, uh, the addiction had taken such a hold on me that I, I it was never enough. The chase was, uh, it, uh, that's the terrible spot of being in addiction is the chase to get more. Uh, the never ending sub amount, it's not enough, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, it just progressively got worse. And uh, I knew at that point, if I didn't get any help, that, that would have been the the, the crowd that I was hanging around with were some of them were hypodermic needle users and I knew that if I didn't get help at that point that was the next that was probably the next step for me and I wouldn't have came out of that one for wow. sure yeah so how did your journey to recovery begin then well like I said with uh, going to the teen challenge outreach and seeing my friend there when I saw him at the end of the of the um at the end of the outreach, uh, he saw me and I saw him and I, I was broken. I was a broken person. I just bawled in his arms and I was happy to see him, but I was crying like a baby because I, I had no no hope for anything. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, he goes, first he, he ran up to me and grabbed me and started shaking me and I was kind of like shaking the devil out of me. Um, but <laughs> uh, he said, Rocky, he goes, I've been praying for you for six months and here you are. I'd never forget what he told me. He said, Jesus Christ and this program will change your life. So I was, I applied two weeks later and then I locked myself in my house so I couldn't do any bad things. And I, I waited until I got the call to go to, to the center to get in. Yeah. So I know recovery is, is not an easy journey. Tell me about some of the practical steps that you went through at the uh, Atlant Teen Challenge Atlantic Men's Center. Oh, I was in the program in London, Ontario. It was the London, it was called the Teen Challenge Farm back then. I think it's the Ontario Men's Center now. Um, but just the, the structure, uh, the routine, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things like we, we take for granted, like uh, making your bed in the morning, things like that. And I mean, the, the, the structure of the rules was really difficult for for me at the beginning, because I mean, all addicts in general, we don't have rules. There aren't any rules for us. That's why we're in the position that we're in. Mm -hmm. So having to follow rules, it was, a, it was a learning curve for sure. I know they have all these steps, counseling, community living, work therapy, spiritual formation, character leadership, all these different things. How do they all add up to help you get free from addiction? Well, it's, it, like I said, it's a progression. So at the beginning, you're, you're kind of just feeling things out. But as you allow yourself to be vulnerable, and to say, you know what, this is, uh, this is the maker of everything. And if he's got an opportunity for you, you're going to take it. So, I mean, the counseling was, was huge because uh, I just dropped everything. Everything that I ever had that was in the back of my mind or that I had no forgiveness for, I, I, left, I left it all there. Uh, so it was, a, it was a, a great way to grow because uh, I never really felt like that, let's say. I didn't have those feelings of forgiveness or compassion or empathy for other people because the drugs, the drugs really take that away from you. They don't, you can't feel empathy or you can't feel anything but 
you know, the, the chase and the, the addiction that you're in. So I know that God's a big part, your faith is a big part of the Teen Challenge program. Yeah. Was that impacting your life in some way? Both of my brothers are born-again Christians, and I've seen the blessings in their lives, and they were tangible. And I remember having a conversation with my oldest brother, and I said, well, what about me? And he said, well, what about your mom and dad? I said, what do you mean, honor your mother and father? And he said, yeah. He said, well, your lifestyle, I'm honoring them. So that was kind of the first step to say, okay, it's time. Tell me about how faith played a role in you recovering, Ben. Well, uh, I, I, after, after two months in the program, I just felt like I was at peace. I was at home. Uh, I felt comfortable. I wasn't uh, um, nervous or anxious about anything. And just uh, the Holy Spirit really spoke to me one night and, and said, it's, your, your life was always mine. So just give it back. And I said, well, here we are. And so I gave it back to him. And I said, wherever, however, whenever, which is not a, need, not a smart thing to do sometimes because <laughs> you might be walking into something that you're, you're not aware of or you're not prepared for. But he's always prepared stuff for me. and always prepares a way. So I just walked in it. Tell me about your family life. My goodness. So uh, throughout my program, all my, my heart's desire was just to have a family, right? I just... The Lord knows my heart. He knew that I wanted to, to have a family. So as I came out here, after I finished the program, I was allowed to do an internship uh, in the, at the Rembrandt Cook Center because being a cook, they needed one there. And I really didn't want to go home after the year that I was free and clear of everything because it was kind of like uh, the same guys in the same place doing the same thing. And I just couldn't, I couldn't walk back into that because I knew, um, although I had the tools, it was just a, if you're not, if you're in the same area, uh, you really have to stay on guard and I was just I was out of steam at that point I didn't want to have to go back and fight every day for sobriety so I thought the best I, best thing to do was to make a clean break and it really hurt because I needed to leave my mom and dad and uh, but the Bible says you know you're, there's a time where you're gonna have to leave your mom and dad so my parents said don't worry about us we'll be okay are you okay now I said I'm fine and they said go God bless you so I went and uh, I'm glad I did. I really am. So you're married. You have an eight-year-old son? I have an eight-year-old son and a five-year-old girl. Aww. Yeah. So keep praying for me, please. <laughs> and you own a restaurant? I do. Well, uh, well Rocco's Cucina. Uh, it started off in Moncton. I, I did a uh, farmer's market booth because uh, moving out to the East Coast from Toronto, um, I was craving a veal sandwich, I'm going to be honest. I was, I was craving a veal and uh, I couldn't find them anywhere. So um, I thought that that would be a good, there's a hole I can fill. So I made my wife these arancini one night. It's a rice ball filled with cheese. And she told me that, she told me, I, you need to sell these. And I said, where? And she said, try the market. So I went the next day and there was one spot left and I took it. Wow. And I did that for almost two and a half years. And then I had to get a real job because I couldn't support anything with just doing stuff on Saturdays. But uh, I went, I, I got some other jobs. I went back into service and stuff. And last year uh, I was riding my bike out to the rocks, uh, Hopewell Rocks. And on the way back, all I saw was this for sale sign as I zipped by. But I heard, I heard a voice say, check this out. So I pulled a U-turn and I looked inside and I got a chill through my whole body and I had found my, my little place. It was, it was the perfect spot in the perfect place at the perfect time. It's incredible to see the arc in which your life is coming. Are you ever afraid of relapsing? Is that a fear? Um, you know what? No, because I have a good support uh, team around me, people that I can lean on if there's anything like that. But um, it's always it's always present, but it doesn't need to be addressed, right? It's always there. You know that I know where I can put my feet now and where I can't. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I thought I could I could do it on my own strength. But I've realized that my own strength doesn't really lead me anywhere good. So I, I, I watched uh, carefully uh, what I was doing. And I kind of, I use this analogy. If you walk down the yellow line in the middle of a street, you'll never get hit by a car. But as soon as you step off that line, you're creamed in either direction. Uh. So that was the, that's the, the narrow road, I suppose, that it he talks about it's so incredible to see where you are today where do you think you'd be right now if you hadn't gone to the teen challenge program oh my gosh uh i don't know i, I know that it wouldn't be good um but in all honesty i i can tell you that the way that my addiction was before i got into teen challenge my next progression would have been to use needles and i don't think i would have came back from that
I don't, I don't believe that at all. You know, I know that there's people watching who themselves are going through addiction or they have a loved one that is suffering. What kind of encouragement would you give to somebody who just feels like, that's you, Rocco, but there's nothing for me? Yeah. Um, I thought the same thing. Uh, the prayers of the family around for the person are definitely, they're, they're heard. So if, you're, if you pray, just keep praying for them. And really, it, it come, it's based individually on the person if they're ready for it or not. And some people aren't ready for it and they don't end up getting to a spot where they can make it to where they want to be. But I was just tired of everything. I was tired of the battle. I was tired of not, um, not being able to produce anything, not being functional in society. I just had enough of it. It, was, it, was, it wasn't fun at all. So would you say there's hope for everyone? Every absolutely. person suffering from There addiction? is absolutely hope for everyone. There is. Um, for those that are addicted, I mean, keep keep fighting and know that there is there is a way out. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna echo the words that Tony told me. Jesus Christ and that program will change your life. Simple as that. And it did. It sure did. Yep. Thanks so much for coming to share your story. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks.